Hey guys, Edward here from Edward79, the mixed content creator. There are plenty of foods out there that are just marvelously delicious. You know, chocolate, wine, bananas, chickpeas, you name it. But sadly, thanks to climate change, many of these beloved supermarket staples could disappear from the aisles forever. So here are 20 foods that you should probably enjoy now before climate change kills them for good. As one of the world's most important crops, wheat is one of the last crops you'd want to go extinct from climate change. But, but unfortunately, droughts worsened by climate change, rising CO2 levels, and the Russia-Ukraine conflict it all combined to severely threaten the supply of this major grain. But that isn't even the worst part, because the, the actual worst part is that even if we stop global temperatures from rising any further, wheat growing areas affected by harsh droughts will still double in 20 to 50 years. And while you'd think that rising CO2 levels would be a good thing because they'd, they'd help the wheat plants photosynthesize and, as, and increase yield, link to my photosynthesis video in the description below, well, a recent study has actually shown that rising carbon dioxide levels strip significant amounts of nutrients from plants like wheat, barley, potatoes, and rice. So overall, if you've noticed that your bread is costing more than ever before, now you know why. Ocean acidification is one of the main problems caused by climate change, and it's making life much harder for many marine species, in unfortunately including those we eat. For example, ocean acidification dissolves the shells of, of bivalves like oysters, mussels, and clams, which ends up decreasing the supply of these ocean delicacies. But climate change comes with other problems. For example, high temp temperatures kill sardine larvae, as well as the plankton and that these sardine larvae feed on, meaning a sardine shortage could be looming if we don't get our climate act together. But there's one more problem, and that is overfishing. Although many different fish species are overfished, one of the worst affected is bluefin tuna. Unlike salmon or shrimp, bluefin tuna cannot be farmed, as they require too much space and too much work. This means overfishing from the wild is severely decreasing the population, especially because they're very slow breeders. So, in reality, because of what we did to the ocean, our favorite seafood delicacies are in great danger of going extinct. Just like wheat, corn is very sensitive to drought, and a badly timed drought can wipe out entire harvests of this crop. But you want to know the, what the worst part is? Because the worst part is, corn farmers pretty much never know when a drought may strike. A corn plant is vulnerable to drought during its entire life, but the crop is at its most vulnerable when it starts producing pollen-covered tassels, or in other words, flowers. If a drought strikes right when the crop starts flowering, then the entire crop is at risk of dying. And even if the crop survives through all that, a changing climate can severely reduce corn's growth rate. In fact, a rise of just 1 degree Celsius can slow the growth rate of corn by 7%. Even worse, corn is even more important than wheat as corn is made into a wide variety of food and non-food products that people use on a daily basis. So yeah, climate change is actually so bad that not even the world's most important crop is safe from its effects. As one of three fruits native to North America, cranberries were used for food and medicine by indigenous people for centuries. But unfortunately, as with, as with all the other foods on this list, Climate change is putting this winter-hardy crop in grave danger. Erratic rainfall and unexpected droughts can completely decimate crops, while heat waves ca can cause a condition called sun scald, when the fruit quite literally cooks itself on the vine because it's unable to cool itself. And despite what you might believe, no, cranberries actually do not grow underwater. Did they grow? They grow on dry land and just like any other berry bush. But that doesn't make them any less vulnerable to the devastating effects of climate change, such as droughts, erratic, rain erratic rainfall, and destructive heat waves. So the next time you 
you know, time you suddenly realize your Thanksgiving cranberry sauce skyrockets in price, climate change is to blame. Peaches are undoubtedly one of the most delicious fruits out there, but this soft, sweet, and juicy fruit is in big trouble thanks to climate change. Here's why. You see, in the winter, when fruit trees like peaches are dormant, they need to go through a certain amount of chill hours, where temperatures remain between 32 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit for the tree to bear sweet, luscious peaches. But as climate change causes warmer winters, the amount of yearly chill hours has dropped as much as 30% in hard-hit areas. But thankfully, it's not all doom and gloom for the future of this fantastic fruit. You see, in 2020, the USDA, or United States Department of Agriculture, released three new peach varieties, all of which have been are bred to survive shorter, warmer winters via the fact that, that they need far less chill hours than was than regular varieties. So unlike most other foods on this list, there is actually a glimmer of hope for the sweet, luscious fruit. Rice is a crop that feeds over half the world's population, making it one of the most important crops for human survival, especially in less developed regions. Unfortunately, it thrives in wetlands and need more, needs more water to grow than corn or wheat making it even more vulnerable to the droughts and erratic rainfall of climate change than, than almost any other crop. But despite, but ironically, the worst enemy of rice farmers actually isn't droughts and, and lack of water. It's actually the exact opposite, coastal floods caused by rising sea levels. These coastal floods deposit salt into the soil, making it impossible to cultivate the rice fields and killing any existing rice plants with salt. Because of this, upwards of 200,000 coastal farmers will be forced to leave due to rising sea levels in the next 120 years. So I guess wheat, corn, and rice are all threatened by climate change. Now that's what I call a plus-sized food crisis. Just like peaches, cherries require a certain amount of chill hours when they're dormant in the winter in order to produce the beautiful cherries they're known for. So what that means is that warmer winters are affecting cherries in a similar way to, their, to how they're affecting peaches. But it gets worse. Enter late spring frosts. Even before climate change, late spring frosts are a deadly threat to cherry blossoms. And these frosts are actually, as you might expect, are getting far worse these years and more unpredictable thanks to climate change. This is dangerous news for fruit growers, as the, as the cherry blossoms turn directly into cherry fruits. So if all the blossoms die, the entire fruit crop is lost for the whole season. And don't get me wrong, cherries are already super expensive as it is, but as climate change take continues to take its toll on cherry orchards all over the world, expect the price of this highly nutritious fruit to skyrocket. Around some 10,000 years ago, us humans started domesticating the chickpea, a legume that's the primary source of protein for some 20% of the world's population. But the domestication of this legume does have a downside. The domestication of chickpeas reduced its genetic diversity, making the plant harder to adapt to climate change. Chickpeas are particularly vulnerable to two things, drought and disease both of which can destroy entire harvests of chickpeas. And the worst part is, is droughts are getting, getting worse thanks to climate change. And climate change is also fueling like, like massive breakouts of, of plant diseases that destroy chickpea harvests. So, oh, to, keep, to keep chickpeas from going the way of the dodo, Seeds and DNA from wild chickpeas in Turkey and Kur Kurdistan have been collected in the hopes of breeding a plant more resistant to droughts, extreme heat, and the other atrocities that come with climate change. You may know that different types of wine have different signature flavors, but what you might not know is that those flavors are actually very delicate. Wine grapes require very, 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 very specific conditions to produce the to produce wines that have their signature flavor. In fact, growers are already heading into regions that were once too cold to grow grapes, 
and seeking higher altitudes for more consistent climates. Droughts, floods, fires, hails, and unpredictable rain slash freezes all threaten to absolutely destroy wine grape harvest harvests. In 2020 alone, fire and smoke damage which destroyed 13% of California's wine grape crops. 13%! And a recent study predicted that a global temperature rise of just 2 degrees Celsius can shrink suitable wine grape growing regions by as much as 56%. So if you notice that your wine doesn't taste like it should, now you know why. Most of America's almonds gr are grown in the drought-stricken state of California, which is already a bad idea on its in itself because almond trees require tons of water to grow. But unfortunately for almond growers, California's water shortage is getting worse as rainfall dwindles and less snow accumulates on the Sierra Nevada mountains. Snow melt from the Sierra Nevada mountains is a big supplier of California's water, and as less snow accumulates and melts earlier thanks to climate change, almond farmers are at serious risks from droughts worsened by climate change. This is bad news for a crop as thirsty as the almond, but there is hope. See, by 2050, Oregon and Washington have the potential to be warm enough to support almond trees, and researchers are looking into the potential of the almond industry shifting north into those states. So there, there actually is hope for this nutritious nut after all. As you may have heard recently, the population of honeybees has been falling sharply, which means it should come as no surprise that honey is in grave danger. For one, erratic weather is causing bees to come out far less frequently, and as flowers bloom earlier, the time when bees come out from hibernation and flowers bloom are no longer in sync. But climate change isn't the only thing causing honey to get more expensive. Pesticides, especially neonicotinoids, are causing and fueling a dangerous condition called colony collapse disorder, which can wipe out entire beehives and drastically reduce honey yields. But if we lose bees, honey isn't the only leave food product to disappear from the aisles. You see, most, around a third of the crops we eat are pollinated by bees. So if bees go extinct, not only are we losing honey, we're also losing many bee-pollinated crops, like apples, peaches, cherries, and almonds. Now that's a buzzkill. In order to grow big, delicious peanuts, consistent temperatures and normal levels of rainfall are required and I do mean required, which is exactly why climate change is a massive threat to peanut farmers all over the world. Erratic weather, natural disasters, droughts, and floods all contribute to, to peanut growers losing absolutely massive amounts of their crops, and all of them are worsened in one way or another by climate change. Not only that, but speaking of drought, Spring and summer moraines are dropping in peanut growing areas. And what this means is that peanut farmers are in a lot of trouble thanks to climate change. Even worse, peanuts are one of the most popular snacks, either by themselves or in candy or chocolate. So, so you better believe peanuts and peanut containing candy are going to skyrocket in price. Enjoy your maple syrup drenched pancakes while you still can, because climate change means a maple syrup shortage is already upon us. Warmer, wetter winters and drier summers are putting more stress than ever on sugar maple trees, the trees that are tapped for the sap for maple syrup. This is because in the winter, they need freezing temperatures to fuel the process of expansion and contraction used to produce that sweet sap. And rising temperatures are also causing, to, causing sap to flow earlier, sometimes up to a month earlier than the normal season for sap to flow. And because the trees need cold temperatures for sap production, chances are the industry will move further north, out of the U.S. and into the, to the colder reaches of Canada. So yeah, sugar maple trees stressed by climate change will cause the price of maple syrup to go up, 
and go up dramatically. Floods, droughts, heat waves, and storms. Oh my. All of these climate change worsened phenomena are severely impacting tea growing regions all over the world. Combine that with erratic rainfall, extreme temperature variations, frequent landslides, and the fact that tea is a very sensitive crop, and you get a disaster for the tea industry just waiting to happen. And just like with beer and wine, climate change is going to make tea taste worse than ever, as the balance of chemicals that d give tea its delicate flavor is getting disrupted. Even worse, tea is also losing many of its health benefits, as climate change is causing tea plants to lose the antioxidants and other plant compounds that make tea so good for you. Talk about a triple threat. Lower yields, awful taste, and less health benefits. No, no, despite what you may have heard from some stupid headline, coffee isn't even close to going extinct. But don't get your hopes up, as climate change is still a big threat to the world's coffee supply, as rising temperatures and more intense droughts and floods can devastate coffee crops all over the world. And this spring, a, a massively destructive drought in Brazil caused the price of this caffeinated delight to go through the roof. But that's not it, because with rising temperatures and shifting weather patterns comes a notorious leaf disease, coffee leaf, the leaf rust. This fungus infects the leaves and, and scatters rust-covered spores all over, making it impossible for the tree to photosynthesize, resulting in no coffee berries and no coffee. So, even though coffee isn't technically at risk of extinction, with all that it has to contend with, it might as well be. This one may come as a shock, but beer is at serious risk of being lost to climate change. And both the barley and the hops are in big danger thanks to this climate crisis. Just like wheat, barley is being hit hard by climate change. And even worse, the climate crisis will also make beer taste absolutely awful as barley and hops become more scarce and and beer breweries switch to cheaper ingredients. In fact, one beer brewery actually purposefully makes their beers taste absolutely horrible to give people an idea people an idea of what beer would taste like after the, like once the climate crisis has come into full swing. And speaking of hops, rising temperatures and other effects of climate change such as disease can decimate hop yields and cause the price of beer to skyrocket. So, I guess, enjoy a cold one while you still can. Well, if you're 21, one and over, that is. Vanilla used to be somewhat cheap, but now it's the third most expensive spice in the f***ing world, only after fennel pollen and saffron. And there are, there, are, there are three reasons why, but in this video I'm only covering two. Climate change and crime. Because of rapid climate change, droughts and cyclones are getting worse, and that ends up putting vanilla farmers' crops in grave danger. Sure. But climate change isn't the only reason why vanilla is so expensive, and the second reason is crime. In Madagascar, for example, where 80% of the world's vanilla comes from, organized vanilla crime, vanilla theft has been rampant, forcing farmers to harvest their crop early which means lower quality vanilla for the same prices. Combine that with the atrocious effects of climate change, and you'll soon see why vanilla prices have soared to unbelievable levels. You may have actually heard that bananas are expected to go extinct in the next few years thanks to a fungus called Panama disease, a nasty disease that can wipe out bananas as we know them but things only get worse for this delicious fruit with climate change. Higher temperatures are in fact causing higher banana yields, but more frequent and more destructive floods and droughts are expected to decimate production of bananas all over the world. And even though, yes, bananas do like hot temperatures a lot, adverse climate conditions are expected to 
to destroy harvests and cause the price of this once cheap fruit to absolutely skyrocket to unbelievable levels like everything else already has. So with the combination of Panama disease and the adverse effects of climate change, it really is a miracle that this potassium-filled fruit still exists. As the chocolate myself, chocolate is one of the last things that I want to go extinct. But since we can't have nice things, a severe chocolate shortage is very much so on the way. Here's why. You see, chocolate is made from cacao, and cacao is one of the worst affected crops by climate change. This is because the trees are hypersensitive to environmental changes, and farmers regularly lose up to 30% of their cacao harvests just because of this. Unfortunately, their sensitivity makes cacao trees is more vulnerable to climate change, as even the slightest heat wave or cold snap can destroy entire harvests of this chocolate bean, let alone worsening natural disasters like droughts and floods. So I'm sorry to say this, fellow chocoholics, but climate change just might cause this delicious treat to kick the bucket soon. As the emblem of good health and wellness for many, the avocado is one of the healthiest fruits you can eat, with loads of nutrients, almost no sugar, and heart-healthy unsaturated fats. What's not to love about this fruit? Well, the fact that climate change will cause a shortage of this fruit, maybe? Yes, not even a food as iconic as the avocado is safe from the climate crisis. Just like almonds, the majority of avocados grown in the U.S. are from California. And just like almonds, California's wa worsening water crisis will hit the fruit hard. And just like cacao and tea, avocados are very temperature sensitive, meaning worsening and more unpredictable heat waves and cold snaps could very possibly spell the end for this fabulous fruit. So, sorry avocado on toast lovers, but this food might just go extinct in the coming years. And if not go extinct, become way more expensive. So there you have it, the top 20 foods that are the most threatened by climate change. We hope you enjoyed this video. As always, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Mm.